the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. So our old friend Gary Gibson is on, and he's changed his venue on the web, and he's now teamed up with our other friend, Jeff Berwick. So Gary, how are you doing there? I'm pretty good, thanks. So you're outside the USA, huh? I'm feeling safer already. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you could never be too safe in the US, that's for sure. So, so what's going on with you? What's, uh, what are the latest developments here? Well, in a couple of days, we are saying uh, goodbye to the whiskey and gunpowder newsletter that I ran for a few years for Agora Financial. And um, before that's over, though, I'm saying hello to my friend Jeff Warwick and finally taking the plunge and leaving the U.S. for an extended period of time to work with him at the Dollar Vigilante, where I am right now, writing right. and editing with him. And you have to spell uh, Dollar Vigilante for our listeners because they've been dumbed down by the uh, American public school system. Yeah, the, the public school system. All right, D-O-L-L-A-R-B-I-G-I-L-A-N-T-E.com, Dollar Vigilante. Okay, you know, that's an inside joke with Jeff and I. He always has to spell Vigilante because, you know, they just don't know how to spell anymore. They stopped teaching that in school. You know, Jackie Mason, that famous comedian, always says, when I went to school, we got homework. Nowadays, they give out condoms. So, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's social engineering at a grand scale there, that's for sure. And so, that's because condoms are evil, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, homework is, uh, is evil to uh, <laughs> when you're wanting to dumb down a uh, society. The first thing that's got to go is the homework, right? I think the first thing to do is uh, convince them that you, they absolutely rely for the uh, prosperity on the state. That is the real reason you want to get kids in public ed education because uh, they can be indoctrinated. So you can still teach them stuff that'd be useful, although eventually you don't. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the first thing is allegiance and dependence uh, to the mm -hmm. state, Absolutely. first and foremost. Funny how that works, huh? Yeah, really funny. So that's why I end up surrounded by people like, uh, uh, I don't want to jump out of myself too much here, but that's the thing. Like, I'm, not, I'm scared of the government in the US. I completely am. These guys are insane. Uh, Sociopaths. Uh, yeah, they're, they're running the show. They want to get total control. We talked about that earlier. But more than anything, I'm worried that I live with people who don't see the danger because they've been taught their whole lives to trust the state like the, like the people of old trusted the church. So I, w I don't want to be around those people. They're the ones that I, I'm just as scared of my neighbor in the U.S. And I, I like living in the U.S. otherwise. I think it's overall a pretty well-developed place. I like the architecture. I'm used to it. I speak the language, I speak yeah. with the accent, but uh, I'm just as scared of, of my neighbor's uh, complete belief that, um, you know, this, that the government really is not out to do anything wrong, as I am with the government itself. Yeah, well, they, Gary, don't you know that the government has your best interests at heart? I don't know that, actually. <laughs> you know, well, you, thing, you weren't properly indoctrinated. That's your not. problem. Was, Life would be stick. so much easier. <laughs> I used to be a fundamental Christ, fundamentalist Christian for a little bit, uh, too, so that didn't stick. You know, I just, it, it, irrational things just don't stick with me. So <laughs> here I am. So you're all hopeless. By myself. Yeah, I'm hopeless. I don't go to church. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't worship with the church of the state. I'm just, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a threat, man. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble if I stick around. So <laughs> I figured I'd come much. here where I'm among like minds. Yeah, so, so what are you going to be doing at the dollarvigilante.com? Everything I can. Uh, <laughs> I am just listed as one of the editors now. I'll be contributing, obviously, um, you know, work on the daily issues and the uh, monthly and semi-monthly issues. Uh, we are coming with new products for readers to help them out however we can. Uh, and, of course, there is the issue of citizenships and passports mm -hmm. uh, with uh, TDV, TDV passports. Um, 
looking to get people out on the Underground Railroad, the new updated Underground Railroad, uh, to help the slaves in the USSA escape to freedom anywhere else. It was <laughs> like the, uh, yeah, was it your column today? It said, Dear Slavey. Is that, uh, is that <laughs> yeah, yours? That's a, no, that's a, that's a regular edition that was here before I got here. Yeah, I was so. reading it today, and I was... I really got a kick out of it, I have to say. Yeah, that's uh, one of my favorites, yeah. It was fun fun to read. And, you know, it's uh, I interviewed somebody from uh, Dollar Vigilante in Vegas at Freedom Fest about, uh, was it Ken, I believe? It was Ken, yes, yeah, it was Ken. Ken. Yeah, about getting a second passport, and we got a zillion downloads off of it. People uh, really are interested, and I think that interest is really going to increase because i can tell you this over the past couple of weeks i don't think i'm doing anything different on financial survival network.com well our website traffic's up by about a third and downloads are up by about 40 percent of the audio show and like i say if i was doing something different if uh, if i changed my voice or uh, you know got a spray on suntan or something I wish I could attribute it to something. I think there's a growing sense of unease and of a fear, perhaps, and it's manifesting itself here. Yes, uh, I, I think you're right. That's um, I feel uh, that I'm part of a serious growth industry, <laughs> but it's something I believe in. It's something I'm doing myself. I for I should uh, disclaim that I don't uh, have U.S citizenship. I uh, never did. I came here as a very small child from a Caribbean nation of which I'm still a citizen and I have that passport. So I feel a little bit better just knowing that. Uh, still, I feel physically unsafe being within U.S. borders where they can legally uh, reach me. They can, I figure they can, if they really want to, they can reach wherever you are in the world. They'll blow you up in Afghanistan, you know. Uh, they'll come they'll to rescue you in, in, in uh, Netherlands. Yeah, yeah it, it, whatever you, it you takes. Really get away. But it you know, makes it a little bit harder to put as many barriers in the way as possible. And I feel, I'm not saying I'm going to get taken away in the middle of the night yet. I'm not saying we're there yet. But I would not be surprised if that started happening. It just accelerates, like rapidly. Before you, could, you, don't, you know, if you saw it coming, you wouldn't be a problem. you get out before it happens. Sure. The, the trick is to leave while it still seems crazy to do so. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, what are you worried about? Everything's fine. And then, you know, two, three months go by and everything's suddenly different. And you didn't get out while you, while you could have. Um, and on that so, yeah. note, on that note, I just did an interview yesterday with a guy by the name of Arch Crawford. And he has a website, Crawford Perspectives. And he's been a, I would call him an astrological financial guy for 40-something years. And he's made some amazing calls, one of which was at the 2000 election. He said, pretty much, I don't know what's going to happen, but this election is strange. Something weird's going to happen. And I don't know what it is, but that's what the chart's telling me. And what he's saying now is the chart's telling him that, the election will either be delayed or canceled, and martial law will be implemented. Now, I don't want to alarm people and say, hey, this guy's always right, because I can show you instances where he's been wrong. But it's just interesting, because my feeling has been something's going to happen, and we're not going to have this election. I could be totally wrong, too. My gut instincts are often wrong, but generally, I've done very well in life going by my gut. Uh, and you said the magic two words, martial law, uh, <laughs> kind of waiting for that to come down. I am far from a conspiracy buff. It just seems like complete natural progression to me at this point. Yeah. I just, uh, I mean, the, the, the whole FEMA camp, you know, disarmament of the populace, the, the drones. I mean, yeah, that would make complete sense if they cancel elections. Um, so the next like five to six months, just watching things get completely like movie kind of crazy just the kind of stuff you you only could uh you thought could only happen on the big screen like happening right outside your your window and you know our like our Mad friend Max. doug casey is always talking about that he's like yeah i'd rather watch that stuff on the big screen in the news in my uh -huh. in my living room in argentina than outside my living room window in uh, minneapolis where i recently came from so yeah hey well i'm not convinced that it's going to happen but it certainly seems that we've had a long progression and these executive orders have come down with alarming regularity, which really restrict rights and, and are really setting the stage 
if there's uh, some type of quote unquote emergency that yeah. martial law would be implemented as the natural course of events, like you said. Yeah, um, I got to tell you that all of them, um, I finally took the jump this year to come down here. And uh, it, it, a couple things happened, a couple events, you know, kind of met and just gave me that push. First of all, it's like the U.S. government was sending me little letters, basically, not to me personally, but just everything they've done has said to me, <laughs> we're not kidding this time. We're, we're, you know, we're going we're to arrest whoever we want. We're going we're gonna to do whatever we want, and um, we're going to take whatever we want from wherever, whomever we want. That was the message all throughout, like, you know, from the attempts to control the Internet to the NDAA 2012. I mean, just, that's just been the message. And then, of course, at Agora, I felt that I wasn't able to... Um, it wasn't a perfect fit at all. Um, I felt what I could be uh, doing with Jeff would work so much better. So it's like I got my marching orders practically from the U.S. government. And Jeff was there with open arms. Like, <laughs> and then Agora Financial was like, yeah, we're not sure whiskey's on its own is doing what we want. I'm like, you know where I'd be useful <laughs> and where sure. I'd be safe. And it just seemed to make complete sense to come down here. And um, I miss my life in the U.S., but I don't miss the U.S. Um, and I, I'll go back as soon as I think it's safe, which could be 10 or 20 years until <laughs> they go through whatever crack up they have to go through and insanity they have to go through and, you know, kind of, you know, it could be quick, like a Nazi Germany thing, you know, 10, 15 years of madness culminating in war and defeat. Or it could be like, uh, instead of the fascists, it could be more communist, you know, like a nice long century of, <laughs> or, yeah. or nearly a century of misery and poverty and isolation. So either way, I'm not <laughs> looking to make a life back there until things look safer. And right now, they got to go through their crisis uh, politically and economically. And that means um, the heavy hand of government cracking down on a poor, riotous populace. <laughs> uh, that's, so I don't want to be poor and I don't want to be put in jail. So I figured I'd, um, there's much more opportunity out, outside. And if you're one of those people who, um, you know, who, who sees this coming, and especially if you have assets, like, and you can work wherever you want, like your business will survive wherever you go. You need to, you know, you really need to look into this. Um, a lot of the people who look for the passports are, you know, they're, they're a lot more self-made than I've had a chance to be yet. They're, they're doing, they've, they've got tons of assets they need to protect and they, and they see what's going on. And um, I already, I'm lucky enough to have no need for a second passport. I already have another passport. Yeah, you're but if I had the money, I, yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 not kidding. I would, um, <laughs> it'd be the first thing I do. I think the age also of like this whole, Another reason I'm glad I made the jump is this, um, you know, um, TDV obviously offered, there could be a huge uh, blow up in, in uh, mining stocks before this, everything goes, you know, haywire. And that's probably, in stocks, that's probably where you'll make your money these days. That's probably your last chance. I think the age of just throwing money into the stock market and kind of watching it all rise, just like the age of um, homeownership being the way to, well, that's, it's kind of over. You know, we're looking yeah, it's at- It's totally this, over. Yeah, the, the next it's bubble gone. will be when the dollar dies and, the, and, and uh, gold and silver shoot up. That's going to be the next bubble, and that's where you should be now. That will um, be huge, no doubt. Yeah. That'll be but huge. as far as like uh, strategies, yeah, you need to, instead of looking for, I wouldn't really care as so much what stock I was buying right now. I'd care more about protecting what I have, protecting, you know, my, my physical self Absolutely. with location. Yep, I agree with you. There's a lot of wisdom there. So we find you at uh, dollarvigilante.com now, right? Yep, I can spell it again. If yeah, spell it again. Person. Just, just to emphasis added on the vigilante. Yes, D O L L A R is dollar, and then V I G I L A N T E dot com. Vigilante, dollarvigilante dot com, and you can always Google us. I'm sure you'll find us that way too. But uh, that's the link, and uh, you can uh, see what we're all about there. We're as you know, you've spoken to Jeff before a couple times, Carrie, and you know that we're both um, very anti-state to the point of we don't want any state. We're all about the markets and. Personal freedom, and we think the world would look beautiful if that's um, if that ever really did happen all over the place. So, yeah, that's yeah. be warned. But yeah. right now, we're focused on uh, the actual advice is to um, protect yourself from the most dangerous criminal gang out there right now, which is the U.S. government. And uh, if you're in the U.S., look for ways to um, get your get out of jail card, and we can help with that. Hey, well, it's definitely uh, some wisdom there, and definitely. Definitely a good insurance policy against what can go wrong here. Hopefully, it's we've still got time left. That remains to be seen. I'm not necessarily buying into that mid-September to end of September time frame, but I do think there's a limit to how long they can keep the financial system propped up. Mm -hmm. And I think arguably there are elements within the government that would like the collapse now so they could just tighten the noose and really... Yeah, you know, go all. They're in place, all the way. man. Yeah, they um, they seem to have everything kind of 
ready to go <laughs> yeah, when the collapse. And, and you hear the whispers on the internet, and people say, "Ah, it's all crazy stuff." But I, I, yeah, pay attention. Like they, they just um, they pass the laws they need to pass. They've mm -hmm. they, they're, they're they're servants. The military and the police are they, you know they're they're trained to do as they're told, and uh, they have every it's in their best interest to do so and uh, to crack down. And and thing is, people, even, you know, even when they're hungry and and angry and and, and totally poor, they still. They believe in their government. Like people believe the U.S. government is a benevolent force in the world. People who live there think that. And you know, the few who don't, those people I'm kind of addressing this to, you, know, you guys, um, lie, get on the Underground Railroad, get out <laughs> when you can. Because um, your neighbors, they, even when things go completely haywire and they're poor and the government's cracking down on them and there's, they're filling the FEMA camps and they've got you know, the police in the street with the tanks and, and taking your gun, all that stuff, your neighbor's still going to think these guys are trying to help. So oh, how yeah. do you fight that? Just, you, uh, what, what's <laughs> just like they helped in New Orleans for Katrina. Like they, they did such a great job there. And yeah, imagine that all over the country in every but, major city, something but like that. Once the dollar goes, the confidence in the government goes to the one. The two are really uh, attached at the head. And if there's no dollar, there's no underlying confidence in the state. And when people are all uh, impoverished because – all their wealth was in paper, they'll understand it then. But unfortunately, it's going to be too late. Gary, yes. good yes. luck. Good Thank luck you. at uh, the Dollar Vigilante. You know, Jeff and I are good friends and uh, always uh, bump into each other in conferences. And we will talk to you again soon, probably in a couple of weeks, after we start seeing the prodigious workflow start emanating uh, from the Dollar Vigilante. Fantastic. All right, Kerry, always a pleasure. Hey, you too. All right, take care. Bye.